Okay, so I think uh, we've got the recording we've got has started, and um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and then I'll uh, introduce myself for anybody else that might watch this in the future. And let me go ahead and hide that. And let me ask folks, can you see a browser window? I can. Okay. All right, yes. good. <laughs> Very good. All right. So let me uh, bring up this uh, introduction here. And lay, uh, for future viewers of this video, um, let me go ahead and just say that this is the uh, Western North Carolina Linux Users Group, Saturday, July 2nd, 2022. Uh, and the presenter, I'm the presenter. My name is Dan Calloway, and, um, <clears throat> and I am a member of the group. All right, so today's presentation um, is on Tmux, and Tmux is a terminal multiplexer. That's, that's basically what it is. Um, there are other multiplexers out there uh, that you may be aware of, such as Terminator and also uh, GNU Screen. I have used Terminator in the past, have not used GNU Screen, but uh, I can tell you that uh, the terminal multiplexer, which is designed for Unix, is far better than any one of those two. Uh, it does things that has features that uh, is not inherent in the other two. And so it is one that is, uh, should be used by anybody who is in the terminal as much as I am. I've been using Tmux now for probably uh, three years. Uh, I'm in the terminal all the time, probably in the terminal 75% of the time I'm in Linux, rarely in the GUI anymore. Um, I'm currently using uh, AV Linux uh, MX edition. So AV Linux is based on Debian and uh, MX Linux or MX21 is the latest. It's based on uh, Antix Linux and Ubuntu. So um, you get the both best of both worlds with AV Linux MX edition. So that's what I'm running. Um, you can man page the Tmux and get a definition for Tmux. But what I did was I grabbed a, uh, an excerpt from Wikipedia. I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Uh, it says, Tmux is an open source terminal multiplexer for Unix-like operating systems. It allows multiple terminal sessions to be accessed simultaneously in a single window. It's useful for running more than one command line program at a time. And therefore, it allows uh, for uh, uh, you to, uh, to be to do more than one thing at a time. And uh, it can also be used to detach processes from their controlling terminals, allowing remote sessions to remain active without being visible. And I'll demonstrate some of that. So uh, you can um, uh, do multiple things in a, in a single window within Tmux. Uh, and I'll demonstrate that as well using what's called panels. So a Tmux session is basically comprised of a window uh, that you work with. And then within that window, you can create panes and you have to use uh, Tmux commands. And I'm going to be demonstrating the uh, default uh, operation of Tmux at first. And then I'll show you at the end how uh, you can configure Tmux to be easier to use. It allows you to, uh, or let me just say, back up and say, um, you know, who is Tmux designed for? Tmux was really designed for in the Unix world, designed for a system administrator. Uh, basically looking at a system administrator who wanted to to connect to a remote server of some sort and do certain processes such as backups, running a back on, backup on that remote server or running scripts on that remote server, but being able to then detach from that server and uh, not have to worry about uh, being impaired or hindered by having to look at that terminal session. If you bring it up in a regular you know, Linux terminal, obviously, you you can disconnect from the SSH, but then the processes that you have running on that server are going to be disconnected. And Tmux allows that process to continue in the background, even though you disconnect. And I'll talk about more of that here in a moment. So what am I going to be covering in this presentation? I'm going to be looking at five things. I'm going to be looking at an overview and a general overview of the basics of Tmux. We're not going to get into the far-reaching advanced features, of which there are many. 
And um, I'm going to look at how to go about installing it so that you can use it. And then I'm going to talk about some of the features of Tmux itself. Uh, during that presentation, I'm going to hopefully show you how I can do some creating of vertical and horizontal panes within a window, uh, creating and managing the windows themselves, creating more than one window within a session. And then where Tmux really shines, I'm going to show you how you can create more than one session, how you can switch between those sessions to enhance your workflow and uh, make you more productive. And then lastly, I'm going to wrap up the presentation with showing you customization of Tmux to make it easier to use and uh, how to tweak Tmux so that it makes it easier to use. Now, one of the things that I will mention, and that's on my slide here, uh, an important point is that Tmux will survive a loss in SSH connectivity if you're connecting remotely, or if you're on your platform, if you close the terminal just by going up and clicking the X in the upper right-hand corner, which would normally destroy your session and you'd have to start over, Tmux will survive an inadvertent closing of the terminal session by doing so, that process. However, Tmux will not survive if you type exit in the terminal and close it. Um, and I will later at the end, I will show you how Tmux overcomes that restriction and allows that to even be restored or saved and then be restored. Um, a warning that I have here in this uh, presentation is that Tmux is not persistent during a reboot of the platform by default. So if you reboot your platform or if you reboot your server, remote server you're working with, you'll lose your Tmux session. Uh, if you close the last pane of the Tmux session by using the exit, as I mentioned earlier, you will lose your Tmux session. Or if you experience a power loss on your platform or power loss on the server itself that you're connecting to remotely, you will lose your session. All right. That's the default behavior. However, there is a process called Tmux Resurrect, which I will also touch on and show you, I'll demonstrate it rather. I won't show you how to build it, but I'll demonstrate it. That will allow you to overcome even those limitations. So you will be able to reboot your platform. You'll be able to exit the last pane and you'll be able to uh, experience a power loss and still retain your sessions and, and you'll be able to use those. All right, so I think that's all I have for now for here. So let me go out to the terminal and uh, begin the presentation this way. All right, so the first thing we need to do in order to uh, use Tmux is we need to get it installed on our platform. And uh, if you don't know whether you have Tmux installed, we'll tell you that Tmux 99.99% of the time, Tmux will not be pre-installed on your Linux distro, regardless of the Linux distro that you're using. There may be one or two distros, I'm thinking of Kali Linux, for instance, that may have Tmux installed, but um, by and large, uh, you will not have Tmux installed by default. You will have to install it. And so if you want to know if you have it, you can run uh, which Tmux. And if you get a return in the standard out here, which is user bin Tmux, that's the path to the binary for Tmux. So that indicates that I do have Tmux running on my platform. I am using my, my uh, laptop, by the way, uh, running an AV Linux MX edition. All right, so if you don't have it installed, how do you install it? Well, you can run sudo, back up, uh, apt install tmux. You can use this uh, command, and I'll go ahead and just run it. And you can see that it's already installed on my system. And I do have some packages I need to remove, but I'll, I won't mess with that right now. Let me go ahead and clear the uh, screen. And uh, by the way, I need to, one of the d things with this laptop is full screen maps to F11 key. My F11 key on the laptop is mapped to another function. So I'm going to have to go in here every time to bring it up to full screen. And so let me do that. Bring it up to full screen. All right. So um, tmux sudo apt install tmux is how you get it on your system if you're running um, an aptitude-based package management system such as Ubuntu, Linux Mint, uh, AV Linux, MX Edition, or MX Linux, um, or any, any one of those. It's aptitude-based. This is how you would install it. 
if however you're running Fedora or if you're running uh, another uh, RPM based system, you would use uh, sudo dnf install pmux will install it for you. Uh, if you're using uh, Alpine Linux, uh, you could use sudo dnf install pmux. But if you're, you're running uh, Red Hat or an older version of Red Hat, you may have to resort to yum install. However, I think yum is pretty much dec uh, deprecated by now. It's probably no longer even in use, but it's there if I need, need to let you know that. Now, if you're running um, Arch Linux or Arco Linux or Manjaro, one of those, then you'll have to run Pac-Man and capital S, dash capital S. Whoops. And let me get rid of that. And so sudo pacman capital S tmux will get tmux installed on your system as well. And then finally, if you're running open SUSE Linux or SUSE Linux, then you would run zipper install tmux. So any one of those for any of those distributions or any derivatives of those distributions will get tmux installed on your system. All right, so once you have tmux installed, how do you how do you get into it? How do you work with it? Um, all right, so I've got a full um, full screen here, and what I'm going to do is I do have a um, let me just bring it out of full screen for a moment. Bear with me. I do have for the benefit of this presentation, I have a uh, utility called uh, Screen Keys installed, which will show you what I'm doing on my keyboard. Otherwise, you don't know what I'm pressing. So let me do full screen again. All right, so in order to uh, run tmux, you will just simply type in tmux, right? And that will bring up your first tmux session. Now, just ignore this up above here. This is what I've got set up, and I've got a, a different kind of um, prompt set up here as well that you may not have seen before, but that's for my benefit. Um, I'm going to bump up the... Uh, can everybody see that okay? Can everybody see that all right? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, in now that we're in, and I have to do escape sometimes to get rid of this banner down here. For the, Sorry about that. All right. So this is the first TMUX session. As you can see, off to the left-hand side, we have zero in brackets. Now, that means that this is the first TMUX session. The bracketed information indicates the session information. Uh, since it's Unix-based, uh, you probably guessed that the first of anything would be zero and not one, and that's the way it is with tmux. The first uh, tmux session is zero. Off to the right-hand side of that is zero, which indicates the window number. So this is the first window in the first session of tmux. And tmux is running in what's called the tmux server, by the way. And that's what's bringing this up. This is called the tmux status bar down at the bottom. And that's what I'm in right now. Now, between the window number and the name of that window is a colon. And then there's the window name. And then there's an asterisk and a star. And the star means, for purposes of this particular session, it's kind of uh, nondescript because um, irrelevant because the uh, star indicates the session that you're I mean, the window that you're currently in, we only have one window, so it's, you know, it's not important. But if you have two or three windows, the star is going to tell you which window you're in. Now, you may have be wondering, how did Tmux know to name the first window Bash? Well, that's based on the shell that I'm running, and I'll prove that I'm in, I'm running the Bash shell right now by, by typing echo dollar sign shell. And I'm running the bin bash shell. And so tmux knows to go ahead and name that one by default that. Now, that can be renamed. And at some point in this presentation, I'll show you how to do that. Um, sometimes uh, tmux will name windows without you knowing it. And th things like utilities, common utilities in Linux, such as running an htop or uh, uh, you know, a top or uh, a top or something like that. It will name it for you. That's okay. You probably can just leave that. If you want to rename it, you can. So let me go ahead and clear the window here, or clear the screen, rather. And um, let me uh, show you. Oh, I haven't finished. Uh, back up. Off to the right-hand side of that, here is in double quote 
information is AVLMXELT. Now that corresponds to what I have up here in the command prompt. That stands for, and I created that, stands for AV Linux MX Edition Laptop. All right, so this echoes back to the user of TBUX, which host name you're looking at, what platform you're on, because you could be in a remote platform and you wouldn't be AVLMXELT. To the right of that is the time of day, and that's time of day for your time zone. So it's 1222. And then off to the right of that is the calendar date. So this is the 2nd of July, 2022. All right, so having said that, the next thing I want to do is I want to create some panes because I want to show you how you can multitask in a session using uh, multiple tasks, uh, multiple panes. And so to create a pane by default in Tmux, you need to run. Oh, and I need to let me back up one more time. Sorry about that. Forgot to mention this. Control plus, whoops, uh, plus uh, B is equivalent to what's called the prefix in Tmux. And I'll be mentioning prefix a lot in this presentation. So if you hear me say prefix, by default, it means control B. Now, control B means you hold the control key down with the pinky finger of your left hand, and then you hit the B key with your other finger, which is quite a stretch. Uh, and uh, so if you look at your keyboard, you can see what I mean. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll show you how to customize that so that you don't have to do that quite a stretch. Um, and But you don't hold the control B down longer than to just make the connection and then you release it before you enter another command, uh, another keystroke rather, to complete the command. The prefix is what you tell, is what you use to tell Tmux what to do. And you must use a prefix to do that. All right, so let me back up and let me uh, create the first pane. I'm going to create a vertical pane in uh, Tmux. And to do that, I'm going to do a prefix and percent. All right, so control B percent is creating a vertical pane there. So I've got a, a pane on the left and I've got a pane on the right. Let me get rid of that. Pane on the left and a pane on the right. All right, now I want to create a horizontal pane on this right vertical pane on the right hand side. And to do that, I'm going to do a control B, which is prefix, and then shift double quote. And, uh, and so control B or prefix double quote is creating that horizontal pane for us. All right. Now you can create more than that. You can put a, a uh, go over to the left and you can create a series of panes there. But I just want to create these three for now. All right. The cursor is here and syndicated by the cursor bar. And so let's say that I want to run HTOP. And this uh, thing gets in the way here. Um, my uh, screen keys sometimes. And, um, and so I'm running H top in the bottom quarter there or bottom third. And as you can say, see, it's not very good because it's uh, even, even though I've got this zoomed in, uh, you can't see a lot of the H top screen. So that's, you know, not very useful. Um, but what I want to do here is I want to take you up to the, this window here. And so in order to go up a window, the cursor is down here now. What I'm going to do is run prefix up arrow. All right. And so that takes me up to this one. If I wanted to go left, I can do a prefix left arrow. And that takes me over to this pane here. Now, there are a lot of commands to remember here. Don't be uh, upset about that because there's a cheat sheet for it. And then don't be upset about that because I'll make it very easy at the end. All right. So then let's go control B. And right arrow now to get back to the pane there in the upper left, upper right. And so let's uh, let's say if you want to do a disk-free determination, so you're going you're going to do a DF minus KH, and you're going to look at how much di free disk space you have in your system. You can run that. And so if I want to do a Control B and left arrow, that takes the cursor over to the left-hand side. And let's say what I want to do here is I want to go in and uh, work with a file. I want to edit the file. So I'm going to do a sudo uh, nano uh, etc ssh ssh underscore config. All right, so I'm editing my 
SSH config file on the left-hand side. So I'm actually multitasking here because I'm doing three things at once in this one window. Um, I'm, multi I'm actually editing a file here on the left, which is a totally separate TTY or pseudo terminal, if you will. Not a, not a regular terminal session, but a pseudo terminal session. And then on the right-hand side, I'm actually pulling up, uh, looking at the free disk space using the df-kh command. And then down at the bottom, I am uh, looking at htop. All right, so let me go back to the bottom. So let me run a, um, I think that's at the bottom now. And so control B down arrow, control B, P, B down arrow or prefix down arrow will take me across and down to the lowest one here. Now, if I want to zoom in on htop so that I can see it better because you can't really see a lot here. What I can do here is issue another command which is the prefix command and Z. Well, I got that didn't go across. All right, so let me do that again. Uh, I knew that was going to happen. All right, so let's control B and go across, and then let's go control B and down. Now I'm in that window. All right, so now if I want to do and look at HTOP, I do a control B and Z, and that brings up HTOP, zooming in basically on that particular pane. And you can tell you're zoomed in because you have a Z right here. All right, in the status bar, that tells you that that window is being zoomed in. And to remove yourself from being zoomed into that window and go back to where you were, you just repeat the command, control B or prefix B or Z, and that brings you back to that. Now, if I want to go up and look at the DF stuff, uh, or let's go across and look at the left. So let's do a control B left arrow, and that brings the cursor to the left window. And if I do a control B Z, that brings up the configuration of the editing of that file that I'm in, which is my SSH file, config file. And then if I want to get out of that, do a control BZ again and get out of it. All right, so that's showing you how you can effectively multitask in a window, single window, um, inside your first session of Tmux. Now, it renamed this window sudo because it was the last command I used. Don't worry about that. I'll show you how to rename that later. All right. So what I want to do at this point is to show you that instead of using individual panes to do the multitasking, we can use individual windows, which is a little bit better. And to do that, I'm going to create another session because I need to do that anyway. And so I'm going to do a control B D, which is going to detach the current session that I'm in. All right. Did I lose anything? No. And, um, and I'll show you that if you run a PS AUX in grep for um, Tmux, oops, no, grep Dan, let me do that again. PS AUX and grep for Tmux. You can see that we do have a Tmux section running here. Okay, but there's a better way of getting that information. And because um, we have a process running as well here. All right, so the better way to get it is to just run tbux list session. That brings up this information. And by the way, you can shortcut that. tbux ls will do the same thing. And here you can see we have session zero, which contains one window. It was created on Saturday, July 2nd of 2022 at 12.18.53. All right, so that means it's still running, even though I closed the window, uh, which can simulate a uh, loss in connectivity, either a wireless connection or inadvertent closing of the session window. Um, now what I would do here is I want to bring it back. So how do I bring it back? Well, if you've only got one session, the way to bring it back is to just simply go tmux patch and reattach the session. So it brings the session back up that you were working with. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and detach from it again. So I'm going to use control BD and detach from it. I'm going to clear the screen, clean up the terminal, and run a tmux ls again to show you that we still have that one session up. Now, I want to create a new session. I want to do something different here. So to do that uh, and still show the multitasking, I'm going to type multi tmux again to open up a new session. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up the next session, which, as I mentioned to you, 
is session number one. It gets incremented from zero, one, two, three, four, et cetera, by default. And so I'm in my second session, not my first. I'm in my first window of the second session, and it is renamed Bash as well for obvious reasons. But here what I want to do is I want to create two more windows so that I can replicate what I did in the panes in Windows, which is a little bit better. All right. So I had a editing window in the first one. And so I'm just going to call that um, SSH. And so I'm going to have to rename this window first. And so let me do a Control-B, comma, and it brings up this rename window in the status bar. And I use a backspace and I rename it. So I'm going to call it SSH and hit the Enter key. And then that renames that window. So window zero now, which is the first window, is my SSH window. And so now I want to rerun the command sudo um, nano etc ssh ssh underscore config. Whoops, config, not conf. Yeah, let me do that. Uh, control X, no. Let me start over again. Control X, all right, sudo. Well, how come that didn't work? sudo nano etc ssh ssh underscore config bringing up a blank window. I don't know why it's doing that. Shouldn't do that. Uh, let me do a X and get out of it. No. Oh. Let me bring up something else. All right. I don't want to waste time here. I don't know why that's not working. It's, may, maybe it's not config. Maybe it's just C1F. All right, anyway, let's say that I want to, um, uh, for lack of uh, anything else, let's just say I want to run a ping, ping, and I want to ping 25 times my website. I'll have to rename that window from S SSH. Dash network. It was, it was showing that you were editing the file as super user. Yes. As uh, gave you an error message, in other words. Yeah, it's not working for some reason. None of the what's done. It's not working here. Let me get out of this. That's not working for some unknown reason. Reason uh, it worked before, and I have no idea why it's not working now. Um, let me uh, see if I can recover here. So give me a second. I may have to blow this session away and start over. Worked beautifully otherwise. <laughs> so, um, is it because I don't have the window completely? I've got it full screen. Um, hmm. Let me detach from this particular session. And now let me run Tmux LS again. And I do have two sessions. What session zero and session one. However, session one isn't working. So let me reattach to session one and see if I can uh, run a command in it. Um, so what I need to do here is I need to reattach. And so to do that, I could just do tmux attach. But what that's going to do is that's going to attach to the last session I was in, which if it happened not to be what I want to get into, um, then you would have to do something else. And so to do that, something else, you run tmux a, which is short for attach, and then you run the T option, which is target, and you target which session you want to open. And so you want to open up session one. And so that opens up session one. I'm going to go ahead and um, add my new windows here. Let me see if I can do that first. So let me do a control B and C adds a new window. So you can see that now I have a second window here, which is window one. This part is working fine. And then if I want to open up another window, create another window, I use a, a prefix C, which for create. And that creates a third window. All right. Now, I need to get back to the first window because I'm going to rename it something else. And so to do that, I use the command prefix. And I use P for previous. And so that goes back to the previous window. And so if I do a prefix again, and P takes me back to the previous window, which is the first window now. And you can see the star there indicates that we're in the first window of these three. All right. And so I'm going to rename this window. So I'm going to do a control B or prefix comma. 
and I'm going to call this um, ping. All right. Hopefully this will work this time. All right, so um, let's do a ping. C25 data pioneer network org. All right, now it's working. So I don't know why I'm a momentary glitch in connectivity or something. So that's working. So in the first window, I've got a ping session going there. Now I'm going to move to the second window. So to do that, I'm going to use prefix in for next. All right. And so I'm in the second window now. And so I'm going to replicate that DFKH for disk free. So I'm going to call this. Uh, well, actually, let me do this. Let me run the HTOP on this one. So let me run HTOP. Okay. And then I'm going to rename this window. And I didn't have to because it did it for me. As I mentioned, it automatically renames in some instances if it recognizes the utility, a common utility. And so it did. And so now let me move to the third window. And uh, that would be next. And so I'm in the third window because the asterisk here is in the third window, which is two, window number two. And so what I want to do is run advanced top. And so that's a top command. And so this is the a top command here. And so I'm running three things here. And so basically I'm doing the same thing I did with panes, except everything is in its own window. And so this is a little more useful and it's still multitasking because each one of these is its own separate TTY, its own pseudo terminal. And so if I run control B previous, it takes me back to my H top, because I've got an asterisk here for H top. And then if I wanna go back to the very first window, control B previous, will take me back to that very first window where I ran the ping. It tells me now that 25 packets were transmitted, 25 received with no loss in packets, all right? Okay, so that's the second session. And, um, and let me go ahead and detach from that. And I use the control BD again to detach from that. All right, so let me uh, control L and clean up the terminal and let me do a tmux LS again. And you can see now that we have Two, win two sessions now, session zero and session one. This one has one window, this one has three. And that's all well and good because as we know, this came out of this particular session. It gives me the ability to see everything in its own window here, whereas here everything is its own pane. There can be some advantages to that. And I'll show you one advantage here in the third session I create. But uh, for the most part, it's not very advantageous. Um, but, you know, it's all well and good, but then it's not descriptive. You know, I, I don't know what these are. Uh, you know, what, what is, if I forget what session zero is, if I close this all out and leave and come back two hours later and I open it up and I say, okay, I want to connect to the session I was running my uh, H top and H or A top in, was that zero or one? You really have no way of knowing here because none of these are attached. There's no word attached off to the right hand side. So how do you reattach here? So I want to reattach the session zero. And so I'm going to do tmux A and again, target session zero. And now I'm in session zero. I know that because the bracketed number zero here. So now I want to rename this session. All right. So it'll be a little more descriptive. So to do that, I'm going to run another command I'll show you, which is prefix and dollar sign. And that will bring up this rename session right here in the status bar. So let me back up and call this one. Um, I'll call this one demo. Okay, because I was demo, demoing panes. I'll call it demo panes. All right, hit enter. And so now if I come back, demo panes is in the bracket. But of course, the, the last bracket gets dropped because it's too long. But you can see we still have the same pane structure. And we now have a little more description here on the session. So let me detach from this particular session using prefix D. And let me reconnect to session one. So let me tmux A and target that session one. All right, so I'm in session one. Let's rename that one. And so I'm gonna do control B, shift dollar. And um, back up to one here and remove it. And let's call this one monitor because I'm monitoring my system here, all right? Hit enter. And so I'm running, I'm monitoring with pings, I'm monitoring with an H top, and I'm monitoring with A top. Okay, so that's how you can 
rename windows. That's how you can rename the sessions. I showed you how to move back and forth in the windows themselves. Um, then let's go ahead and detach from this particular section. And uh, I will bring Control L to clean up the terminal, Tmux LS again, and show you that we now have these two sections, one called Demo Panes, which is a little more descriptive, and then we have one called Monitor. And I can get into either one of those very easily now, reattach by running uh, Tmux uh, A dash T, and then the word Monitor, if I want to get into the Monitor session, the word Demo Panes, if I want to get into the Demo Panes. Um, let's say I want to go ahead and create a third window now, and I'll show you the advantage of having two panes. Um, so let's call this one um, not monitor, not demo. Let's call it uh, system. And so this time, rather than just hit Tmux and enter and create a third session that I have to then go in and rename the session and rename the window, I'm going to go ahead and name the session as I enter into the Tmux session and rename the first window or name the first window rather. And so the way to do that is tmux new dash s for the session. I'm gonna call this one system and then dash n for the window. And I'm gonna call the window, um, what did I wanna do here? I wanted to demonstrate a tail, okay? Tailing a file, a log file, all right? And so when I hit that, it brings up the system session and it brings up the first window, which is tail. It named it for me automatically when I didn't use the tmux command the way I did. All right, so what I want to do here is I want to create a vertical pane. And so here I do a control B and shift percent sign again to bring up that first vertical pane. And then I want to move to the left pane. So I'm going to do a control B left arrow and move the cursor off to the left. And what I want to do is I want to run a tail of the varlog syslog file. And so I'm going to do sudo tail dash f to follow it, varlog syslog. Okay, so now I'm in the varlog syslog file and I'm following it. All right, so let me do a control B and right arrow and get over to the right hand side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something in the right pane, totally independent of the left pane. And you can watch the left pane and you can monitor what the system is actually logging as I do it. And so here I'm going to do <clears throat> sudo apt install Apache 2. All right, so see it's logging here and you can see that activity is going on in the left hand side because the system is logging information. All right, so that's one of the advantages of, um, of doing this. Now let me go ahead and do a sudo apt remove Apache 2. And I'm gonna remove it. You wanna remove it, yes. And so that should log that removal on the left-hand side. And so I'm monitoring my system while I'm actually doing something totally independent of it in the, the right-hand side. So that's the third system or session rather that I'm uh, running, which is called system. Now let me detach from that <clears throat> and clean up the terminal. And we run the Tmux again to show you that we do have three windows. Now, um, if I were to minimize this, this particular screen and close it, I can show you that it would survive the closure, um, but I won't do that for lack of time. Uh, but but believe me, just trust me, it will survive that. And I can get back in and I can just run Tmux again and it will bring up my three sessions. All right, so um, I've got three sessions here. I've got one called Demo Panes, I've got one called Monitor, and I've got one called System. Um, and what I wanna do is, is if I wanna go from the System one, which uh, I'm actually not in either one of them right now. So let me do a tmux, patch, and target the system one. Get back in it. All right, so I'm in that one. And if I want to go out of the system session and I want to go into the demo pane session, I can do this. I can actually detach from the system. 
and then I can reattach to the system one. So I can run a tmux ls again and do a we clear the terminal and this will run it again so you can see what I'm doing. And so I can then now reattach to demo panes by running tmux a and target that demo panes session. Okay, so now I'm in demo panes, as you can see in the lower left. And um, and that's all well and good, except there's got to be a better way to go between sessions and there is. So while you're in a session, you can run what's called a summary. And so you can run a control B or prefix S. And what that does is it brings up a summary screen of your sessions rather than you having to detach and reattach, detach and reattach. And so I can now use the up and down arrows to cycle through my sessions. Moreover, if you look down at the bottom here, um, it tells me that demo panes has one window and it's the first window, which is Tmux. If I go down to the next one, monitor, it tells me that this particular session has three windows. Window zero, which is ping, window one, which is HTOP, and window two, which is ATOP, all right? And if I wanna get into that particular session, all I gotta do is hit the enter key. But let me go down to the third one, and you can see this one is a tail, all right? It has two panes, but it only has one window, and it was called tail. All right, so let's go back up to monitor, and I want to get into monitor, and so I hit the enter key, and now it drops me into my monitor session. When I want to jump out of the monitor session, and let's say go down to the system session, I just repeat the process of control B S, and drop down to system and enter, and I'm in my system session. So that's an easy way of cycling through your sessions. You could have seven, eight, ten sessions running simultaneously if you wanted to. Each one of these sessions is independent of, of the other. Uh, each one of the windows is independent of one another within the session. And each one of the panes within a session, within a window, is independent. It's an independent pseudo terminal within that particular window of that particular session. All right. So now let me go ahead and do a control B and D and detach from that. And let me do a control L to clean up the terminal. And one more time, let me do a Tmux LS and show you that I have uh, three sessions. Now, if I want to, uh, uh, well, one of the things I didn't show you, let me go back to the demo panes because there's another command I need to show you. And so I'm going to do a tmux patch uh, t and demo panes. I have three windows here. All right, so where's the cursor? It's hard to tell with the way, with the way it's zoomed in here. Let me do a control B and right arrow and uh, let me do a control B and up arrow. I think I, that's going to take me. There we go. And so I'm in the, um, the uppermost right hand side here, as you can see with the, the bar. All right. So how do I close that particular pane if I want to close it? Well, I can kill that pane by doing a control B or prefix X. And it tells you down here on the status, do you want to kill, kill pane? Yes or no? Yes, I do. All right, so if I hit Y for yes, it kills the pain. All right, now, if I want to kill the entire session, one way of easily doing this is to kill all the pains in that first window. All right, and so what I'm going to do here is show you how to do that. You don't have to do them one at a time. You can do a Control B and a Shift ampersand, and it asks you, kill the window, H top. All right, so what you're doing is you're killing both the pains in that one window. You're actually killing the window, which is killing your final two panes. And so here I want to say yes. All right. And so it now says something different than what we saw before. It says exited. Didn't say detached. Exited means you've lost it. All right. So did we? So let's go to Tmux LS. And yes, we did. We exited that particular window in its default behavior. And so we lost the demo panes session altogether. And we now only have two more sessions remaining. All right. Is there a way not only to kill the session, but also to, uh, there is a command you can run, by the way. I won't run it, but it's called tmux kill session. And you'd use a T target again, and then you just went in monitor. If I run that command, that will actually kill the monitor session without getting into it. All right. Just trust me on that. All right. 
But there's an, another way to do that. And the way to kill both of these sessions simultaneously is to run something called the kill server command. What that does is it actually kills the running tmux server that's running right now in the background. Because, uh, let me just show this. I will go ahead and do it anyway. Uh, said I wasn't going to, but I will. If I move the full screen so I can get to it, I'm going to simulate actually an inadvertent closure of this window, the tmux session. I'm going to hit the X. That closed it. All right. So that closed everything. Did I lose everything? Okay. I'm going to show you that. No, I didn't. Whoops, I got the wrong thing. Uh, where are we, Dan? Where's, here we go. All right, bring up this, and let me do a bump it up. And let me go to full screen again. And now I'm back to where I was. Let me ex escape. And so did I lose those two sessions by closing that window? Well, let's find out. If I run a tmux OS, no, we didn't. There they are. There's monitor and system. They've been running in the background, even though I closed it. So I could close the window that I'm in, walk away, not, not power off the machine, not reboot the machine, okay? But uh, close the window and go on to other things in the GUI or whatever I want to do, another terminal, another regular Linux session if I wanted to, terminal session. And these things would still remain running in the background. And to prove that they are, other than to show you that they pull up on the list, I can run a tmux attach t and monitor, and it brings my monitor session back. Okay, so let's go ahead and detach from that now. Detach, so it's detached. And let's clean up the terminal, and let's show you that so to kill both of these simultaneously, to get out of it, to lose it forever, what you can run is a tmux kill server command. That simulates a power loss or also a reboot of the system. And so if I hit enter, all right, it didn't say detached, it didn't say, you know, um, exited or anything like that. But what it did was it killed the server running those two sessions, and so they're gone. And to prove that, I'm going to run a tmux ls, and there's no server running. If I try to attach to a session by doing a tmux attach, no sessions. So I've lost everything I, I was working with. All right. That is my portion of this uh, demonstration or presentation that shows you this. The only thing I haven't shown you, and I'll do that right now, and then I'll move on to the next section, which is the last part, is uh, I want to get to a remote server. So I have a remote server I want to SSH into. And so I'm going to SSH into pi at 192.168.1.125. Which is my open media vault server. And I hit enter, password. Oops, gotta, gotta, I'm gonna show you my password if I'm not careful. Let me get rid of, uh, get down to full screen. Let me get rid of um, this. So I turn that off for show keys. Run the password. And I'm in. So I'm in my server now. And so let me do a clear screen. And uh, now let's run tmux. I've got tmux installed on this remote server. Let me see. Uh, show full screen. There right, we go. That's why I have to go to full screen because you lose the status bar on this laptop. And so I'm running session number zero with window number zero, but I'm not on my local system anymore. I'm on, if you look on the right-hand side, that's what this is for. That's the host name, which is the remote server, Raspberry Pi. It's not my local system. Now I can run both at the same time. I could have three sessions up in my local system while I'm running one session in my remote system if I wanted to. But uh, for sake of time, I won't do that. Um, and I can do the same thing that I did here that I did with my local system. I can do a control B and shift percent to bring up a vertical screen, control B or prefix, control double quote for horizontal. I can run three panes, three independent things, and multitask in my remote server. All right. And now to get out of this, I'm going to do a control B, B attach. And then you can see that it's still running. And now I'm going to run tmux kill server and kill it. All right. 
And so that would simulate the losing connectivity on your SSH. So if I run a Tmux again, LS is no server running on the Raspberry Pi. And so let me go ahead and exit that and get back to the local system. And I'm done. Okay, so let me get out of the um, full screen so I can go back in here. And what I want to show you is, is that there is a way to uh, preserve your, your sessions uh, in Tmux if you do lose connect, uh, do, you know, have a power loss uh, on the platform, or if you uh, reboot the system. Let's say you wanted to reboot that server. If you want to reboot your platform, but you don't want to lose your sessions. All right. And so the way to do that is let me go back to this presentation screen here. And there's, uh, and oh, by the way, there's a Tmux cheat sheet. Let me bring that up before I move on. And let me get into the thing here. This is the Tmux cheat sheet. It's at tmuxcheatsheet.com. And so all the commands I showed you are on this sheet here. There are many more. I probably have only used, I've been using Tmux for three years or more. I've probably only used about a third of these commands. And that's all I really need to do what I need to do. I don't really need to learn Tmux from top to bottom, uh, front, front cover to back cover. So, um, but that sheet's available for you so that you can utilize it. And uh, if you want to use a command that I didn't go over, all right? All right, so let's go back here. And now I want to show you that there is a way for Tmux to, um, to be able to recover from a reboot, reboot, for instance. And that's called Tmux Resurrect. And that's a plugin for Tmux that doesn't exist in the default. And it's also, I want to show you how you can configure or customize Tmux to make it easier to use. So what I have done is I have a pastebin file. So let me log into my pastebin file. And so let me go log in here and I have to give me a moment, log in here. Very, very, very long password for ma master password for, um, for this guy up here, RoboForm. All right, so let me log into Pastebin, and here we are. So this is my Pastebin account, and what I've done is I didn't write this myself. I won't admit that I did. Um, I have a Tmux config file, and I have a Tmux uh, resurrect addendum as well. So you can just choose this one if you don't want to use Tmux resurrect, or you can use this one. I mean, use that one if you want to add Tmux resurrect to your workflow. All right, so if I click on Tmux config, you have this information here. And if I come down, I'll have to put paste this into uh, the file, uh, the video when I edit it so that you have that at the bottom. There's a thing here to copy. So you just click that button right there. You may not be able to see it on the screen, but you click that button and it'll copy the entire file and it'll copy it to the clipboard. And then what you can do is you can come back to the terminal here and then there's a file that Tmux looks at if you if it exists, currently does not exist on the system because I have renamed it, but it's called under the uh, user uh, home directory, there's a file, hidden file called .tmux.config, C-O-N-F. If that file exists, Tmux server will read it on the way in. Uh, if it doesn't exist, it ignores it. All right, so it ignored that this on the first one time I did it in the presentation, because if I do an ls alh and grep for um, Tmux, and see that here's the file. Let me bump this up a little bit so you can see that. Uh, let me go back out here. Screen. All right. So here's the file. It's tmux.config.back. All right. So if I rename that, so I'm going to do a sudo in the .tmux .conf .back and rename it .tmux .conf and put in my password sudo. All right, so now if I repeat that command that I did earlier, you can see that now we have a .tmux .conf file. So theoretically, when I launch tmux server, the next time around, it should reread or read the Tmux 
tmux.config file and will reconfigure tmux to be a little easier to use, tailored to use. And in my case, I also have the resurrect stuff, and I'm not going to go into showing you that because it will take far too long because there are a couple of steps you have to take. But uh, it will then allow me to use the tmux resurrect, which I will demonstrate to you. All right, and so here, if I do a sudo a nano .tmux .conf, brings up that file, and here it is. And so what you would do is you would create that file by using a sudo nano or using some other editor, vim, for instance, or you can use echo and create it that way, or touch, and then use echo to add the content. But you can use nano here to then cut and paste and do a control shift V and paste all that information here into this file and save it. Now let's go over each stanza here. So to show you how it's being customized. The first stanza basically removes the control B for the prefix and says, sets it as control A. So if you look at your keyboard real quick, you can see that if you hold the control key down with your pinky finger, it's far easier to hit that A key than it is to stretch out and reach that B key. So that's the first customization that's being done by this file. The second one is, is it's utilizing the Alt key using left, right, up, and down arrows, okay, on the keyboard to switch between panes, all right? So instead of using the uh, prefix, left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, down arrow to control where the cursor is, I can just simply hold the Alt key down and use left, right, up, down to move between panes, all right? The third stanza, allows you to utilize the shift key and it maps and it binds the left arrow and the right arrow to moving windows left and right. So you can move to the, move to the left into the second window, the first window, move out of the first window, the second window, um, third window, fourth window, et cetera, using the shift uh, right arrow, okay? Now, this is a good one right here. The stanza takes and it actually creates what's called mouse mode. So it allows you, if you have a mouse attached to your system, it allows you to use the mouse for a lot of these interactions. So rather than using the shift and alt, uh, I can use the mouse instead. Another thing that it does here, this next stanza, makes it easier to split the panes, split the windows into panes. So it binds the V key to the vertical split and the H key to the horizontal split, which makes a lot more sense than the uh, shift percent and shift double quote. The uh, easy config reload, what that does is if you're in this file making changes to the config and you don't want to necessarily have to reload your system um, or, or detach from your session and, and then uh, run it and then close this file and save it and then reattach to it after you've reloaded it, what this does is it binds the R key to a reload functionality. Uh, and what it does is it allows you to take the source file which is the .tmux.conf, and hit the R key and reload it so that it, it then gives you a warning that it reloads it, all right? So that's what that does. All right, and then lastly, um, down here, this is the part which I'm not gonna show you how I did it, but I'm gonna show you, demonstrate it for you. Uh, the easiest way to get tmux resurrect on your system is to actually install a plugin manager called the uh, TPM, the TMUX plugin manager. And here are the three steps that you use to do that. They're grayed out, I mean, we'll comment it out here. It shows you how to do it. And that's why I'm not gonna show you, it takes too long. And then you list your plugins down here. So you notice I have one plugin listed called TMUX Resurrect. And so when I run the step three up here, which is to launch TMUX and hit the prefix capital I, it goes down and fetches this particular plugin out on the web pulls it in and activates it. All right, so that's how we're gonna do that. And so it's already been done, and so I don't need to do that. And so let me do a control X and get out of this file. And now to make this work properly without reloading, I can't restart this system and, and do that. And I can't run that R binding because I'm not in a session. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, let me see if I have any sessions currently up. No sessions, but I need to exit out of it. So we need to exit out of it, and then I need to get back in again. All right, and so let's go to uh, down here to actually show you the keys again, and then go in, go full screen, and then bump it up so you can see what I'm doing. 